Hello, algebra students. Let's tackle a concept that is uh, often intimidating to algebra students, especially beginners, but it really is not as bad as it looks. So it's writing expressions we're going to be looking at today, basically writing phrases in the language of algebra. First example says, translate the phrase, the sum of twice a number t and 20. Well, we learned quite some time ago what the word sum means, right? A sum is an addition expression or it's simplified solution. So I'm expecting to add some things. Now, what am I adding? Well, that's what you look for around the word and. So see how it says the sum? It's going to say the sum of something and something else. So we see the sum of twice a number t and 20. I'm telling you to add twice a number t and 20. So let's just start with the and 20 since that's the easy part. And right away, just by knowing that I'm adding something with 20, I can rule out B and D. So even if that's as far as you went, you'd already have a 50-50 shot of getting the right answer. But now I have to figure out what twice a number T is. So take a look at these two, A and C. One of them has us multiplying T by 2. See it shoved up with the 2. And one of, us ha one of them has us dividing T by 2. Uh, commonly, multiplying by 2 is called twice, whereas dividing by 2 is half. So I'm not asking you to take half of t and add 20. I'm asking you to take twice of t and add 20, or two times this number t. And so twice t and 20. A is the correct answer. Next one, which expression represents five times the sum of a number and x? Now, I wanted to do this with you because a lot of times people will write this the exact same way, but I need you to notice something this time. It's not twice a number. This time it says five times the sum. They want you to take five and multiply it by a sum, an addition expression. You are going to need parentheses to do that. When I tell you to do five times the sum, I'm telling you to take five times the entire answer is one way to think of it, of the sum. And so you've got to use parentheses. And now we can put the sum inside those parentheses. What is the sum? It's the sum of three and a number x. So 3 and a number x. And there we go. 5 times the sum of 3 and a number x. So don't make the common mistake of just multiplying the 5 times the 3 and then adding in an x. That's not what I said I wanted. I wanted 5 times the whole sum. And so let's see, where's that answer? Oh, b. Next one, Jerome has $90 more than his brother Raji. Which expression represents the ratio of Jerome's money to Raji's R? So don't panic at the sight of fractions. This one's not nearly as bad as it seems. Let's start with this language. Which expression represents the ratio? If they ask you to write a ratio, they're literally asking you to write a fraction. Don't worry, they're not asking you to add it. Just write it. We're capable of this, guys. Okay, so they want us to write a fraction. And just like with the sum there, like we were looking at that and that, it's the same thing with fractions with these ratios, except for they're going to tell us something to, that's the fraction bar, something else. So let's see, which expression represents the ratio of Jerome's money to Raji's R. So they want Jerome's up on top and Raji's on the bottom. It goes in the exact order in which they gave it to you. So if they say Jerome to Raji, it's Jerome on the top, Raji on the bottom. And now here's a really nice thing. They said they want the ratio of Jerome's money to Raji's R. They already told you what to say for Raji's money. We're just going to call it R. We don't know how much it is, so we'll have that R stand in for the mystery. So right away, once again, I can rule out two of these answers because two of them don't have an R on the bottom. So boom, A and B both have an R on the bottom, so they have Raji's money on the bottom. So now it's just a matter of figuring out how to put Jerome's money on the top. So let's go looking for what we know about Jerome's money. 
So it says Jerome has $90 more than his brother Raji. Now, don't stop your reading right here and say Jerome has $90. If Jerome just had $90, yeah, my ratio would be 90 to R. But he doesn't have $90. He has $90 more than Raji. He has what Raji has plus another $90. That says $90 more than Raji. Don't let it freak you out that there's two R's in this expression. We have Raji's R. But then we have Jerome's amount, which is 90 more than Raji. So yes, R appears twice. And the correct answer is A. And again, don't pick B because B just says Jerome has $90. Not 90 more than his brother, just 90. Awesome, last one. Which expression could be used to find the average of four unknown numbers, W, X, Y, and Z? If you've been with me long enough, you know I bring this up a lot, almost like I want you to know how to find the average. Good news is it is on your GED formula sheet if you forget. However, it's kind of in words, and so this can get confusing. But let's think about what average is. Average, also known as the mean, is what you get if you total the items in a data set. So you put them all together, and then you divide by the number of items in the data set. It's basically what you'd have if you shared all the numbers equally. Like for example, if I wanted everything in life to be fair in our classroom, I wanted everybody to have the same amount of money. I'd be like, okay, give me, everybody give me your money. That'd be totaling it, right? We're putting it all together. And now we're gonna divide it equally among everybody in the class. Now, maybe you would tell me that was mean, uh, but that would be how we would find the average of our money. So same thing here. If I'm gonna find the average of four unknown numbers, W, X, Y, and Z, I need to total those unknown, un, unknown numbers and then divide by how many there are. And so there are two ways to total. We've talked about it before. You can multiply or you can add. But remember, if you just have separate numbers, like, I don't know, I have $5, you have $7, she has $11, he has $13, and we'd like to total, you just add them up. You, you multiply when we have repetition, like four people all have seven bucks, then we can multiply. But that's not what we have here. We just have four unknown numbers. We don't know if they're the same or not. So the best way to put them together would be to add them together. And then of course we're mathematicians, so we would not just write divide by four like that because we would know that's not gonna work, right? If we wanna divide the entire total of all those numbers by four, we need a nice long fraction bar that groups that whole total together. And then we can divide by the fact that there are four numbers. D is the correct answer here. Again, C is wrong because you multiplied together all the data and A and B are wrong because you multiplied by four instead of dividing by four. All right, strong work. And again, I just would like to assure you that you don't have to be able to write these things uh, without the guidance of the multiple choices. That's one of the nice things about the GED. We're kind of taking a mid-level step where even if we can't write them ourselves, can we recognize what the language says? We're getting a little more fluent and you can do it. Super proud of you guys. All right. Happy learning.